Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for still being here. I know we all want to go for a beer, and it's sunny outside. Um, so my name is Pauline, and I'm a product manager. And last year, I was a product manager at Hotwire, one of Expedia's company, big online travel website. Um, I had on my product only, which is car rental, 100K sessions per day. Uh, and I was able to launch with my big team 20 tests per month. I was speaking at conferences, um, telling other people how to do A-B testing, and advanced prioritization system, and I was very, very confident about how I was doing A-B testing. And then last year, I decided that I wanted to eat good cheese and good bread again, and I moved back home to Paris. And I started to work at a small company, Balinia. And we're a marketplace uh, where you can book beauty and wellness treatment, manicure, hairdresser, spa, everything. We have uh, 10K sessions per day, and together with my small team, we can barely launch two new tests per month. So this is what I'm gonna tell you, is how I went from fantasy AV testing in a big company like Booking or Zalando to a tiny company uh, with no traffic, no money, and nobody to do AV testing. <laughs> um, and how I'm still trying to make it work. And it's not really CRO. I don't really like CRO anymore. I'm a product manager, and what I'm trying to do is build a better product for my customers. And I just want to bring them in my product development process. So the first thing that you have to do, really, and that took me a while, because I had all this knowledge, A-B testing knowledge from Hotwire, um, is just be honest. What kind of CRO profile are you? So are you a very early stage startup? And that you on, the only thing you have to worry is just launch a product <laughs> and have customers? Or are you Hotwire, Booking, Zalando, and you have so much traffic and customers that you should be doing continuous optimization? Or are you somewhere in the middle, in the red zone like I am? I do have a product. We have customers buying on a product every day. We have B2C customers and B2B customers. But how do I make it work? And how do I optimize my customer experience? So like I said, I don't have the budget that I used to have at Hotwire. We are a very small company. The company is 40 people. And I don't have the budget that I used to have. I don't have the traffic, very, very low traffic. I can't do fancy A-B testing like I used to. And we're a tiny team. At Hotwire, we had very senior people, specialized people, and you know, we had the knowledge. In my team, it's three of us, and we, all of us have under like six years of experience. So in terms of A-B testing skills, it's very limited. And so at some point, I was like, maybe I just shouldn't do any A-B testing. Maybe I should just launch new features, like a very early stage startup. But at the end, I realized that even if you're a very talented product manager, you are wrong. And I am wrong all the time. So if I don't test, I'm going to be launching the wrong product for my customers. The other thing is you have customers on your product every day. So you owe it to them to test what you're launching. They have to be able to give you feedback on your product and the new features that you're launching. And finally, if you're at a small company and if you're a manager or if you're the, the team yourself, you need it. You need to start building an experimentation culture as early as possible. It's easier to do it when you're only 40 people, three people in the product team, than when you're like thousands and then you have to teach people how to do it. So that's why I was like, OK, I can't do the way I used to do it. But I still need to find a way to make it work for myself as a product manager, for my customers, and for my team. And I really, really believe in A-B testing. I don't have a lot of traffic. I have a tiny team, but I still want to make it work. 
and I can't make it work the way it used to. I have to make many, many compromises. I made many mistakes over the past year, and here is a way that now I can make it working. First of all, invest in training. If you're launching kind of an experimentation culture, you have to invest time and money in training. I first sat down with my team for two hours trying to teach them everything I knew about A-B testing. And then I was like, okay, now you launch five new tests per month. Okay, it didn't work. Um, poor them, they had no idea what an A-B test was. They didn't know that they had to like, write an hypothesis. They didn't know how to use, um, we used Chameleon, so they had no idea how to create a test on this platform. And then in the team, nobody knew how to read results. So the first two months were just a complete waste of time because I didn't make the initial investment in training. Train yourself and take time to train your team. Okay. At Hotwire, we could, I could test what I call today random ideas. If I saw something that I liked on a competitor's website or on another e-commerce website, I could just add it to the list, prioritize it, run the test, learn, I was happy, it was fun. Today I can't just do random tests. I have to work harder on my homework. And I can't just test anything. I have to only test on the few friction, on the many friction points that my customers are, ex are experiencing. So no random ideas. I listen to my customers. We do customer service calls, and we answer to customer service tickets in the product team to make sure that we know where our friction points are. We also read all the NPS feedbacks. We talk to our sales. And with all of that, we have what we call the database feedback, uh, which is just an Excel. And that's like the starting point for any of our testing ideas. We have another big challenge. As I said, we are 40. We have very, very limited budget, so no fancy analytics tool. We have the free version of Google Analytics. That's it. And we have one analyst, and it started three months ago. <laughs> but you still have to start with the data to find good ideas. And even with the free version of Google Analytics, you're going to find ideas. Look at exit pages, bounce rates, um, events, um, and then you're gonna, you have to start from there. No random ideas. It, it's just, it's not working for me today. CRO is conversion rate optimization. So you always want to optimize your conversion rate. And at Hotwire, we were even going one step further because we were working on contribution margin per transaction, which was the exact amount of money that we were making after refunds and cancellations, etc., per transaction. It was really hard for me to change that because everywhere you read about conversion rate optimization and it's all the time about conversion rate. But there are other ways of learning. And if I want to test on conversion rate, I'm gonna have to wait way too long. So I have to look at clicks and exit pages and time on page. It is not as clean as a learning as conversion rate but at least it's a learning and it's a signal from my customers. I don't have traffic, but I'm a small company and I'm willing to take risks. And I'm okay with false positive because it's not gonna be like a million dollar false positive. So that's okay. Um, you read everywhere that it's 90 or even 95 or more. I can do only 80%. 20% false positive? I'm going to survive, my customers are going to survive, my product is going to survive, everybody's going to be happy because we're going to learn faster. Same thing, I have people internally who read about A-B testing and then they ask me if we can do multivariate testing. No, unless we want to run a test for like three and a half years, it's not going to work. At Hotwire, I could test on any page on my website. I don't have the traffic to do that today, and I can only test on four pages. That's the only thing I can test on. And I would love to test on a new My Account page, but I have like 3,000 visits per month, so I'm not gonna learn anything from it. 
So just find, look at the data and find the pages that get enough traffic for at least some A-B testing. I think it was mentioned before, and um, Erin talked about it at Booking. Um, we were very excited at the beginning, and we wanted, I wanted my team to learn A-B testing. So we started with the easy experiments. You know, you change the color of the button, and then you change the text, and then you remove a picture, and you're super happy, and then six months later, you've launched 15 tests. Woohoo! You've learned nothing. <laughs> With the traffic that we have, we learn nothing from small changes. So we have to go to bigger changes. And when we redesigned our results card, we didn't just change one text or one color. We changed a lot of things. Woo! I was so happy it was a loser. It was our first learning after six months of doing small A-B testing. So that was cool. I was really happy. My team thought I was crazy because it was losing, but at least I got a learning. And finally, just keep the process simple. At Hotwire, I was doing weekly demos and lunch and learns and then quarterly updates. And I had like all this very fancy process that I was so proud of. No, we just have one drive, one pitch per test, and we keep it super, super simple. So that's my way of doing A-B testing. It's really not perfect, but now at least we do some A-B testing. My team is trained on it, we're all learning, and we continue to launch two or three tests per month. But sometimes you can't do A-B testing. Sometimes for us, Building an A-B test is way more expensive in development than just launching the feature. And I'm a startup, I don't really have the time, I don't really have the money, so I just want to launch the damn feature. Or in my B2B product, I have 3,000 customers on my B2B part of the marketplace. I can't do any A-B test there. So what do I do to try to make my product better? There are many, many other ways to learn from your customers. If you can't do split A-B testing, Maybe you can do sequential testing. So it's not as rigorous as A-B testing, but it's, it can still give you lots of insights. So last year, the team wanted to test a map on the results page where you can see all the hairdressers on the map around you. And an A-B test, split A-B test was really expensive, so we just decided to do a sequential testing. We looked at the results of the control for two weeks, and then we launched the map and then we looked at the results for another two weeks. <laughs> and, sorry, the results were very clear. Our customers didn't like the map. And we we're really happy that we were still able to do a sequential testing because we could roll back the map, iterate, make it better, and then try it again. Well, we never found a winning version, so you still don't have a map on our website. But at least with sequential testing, we, we, we were able to learn, even if we didn't have an A-B test. The other thing is we don't really have fancy analytics tool, but I found cheaper tools, and from these tools, I learn a lot every day from my customers. In our B2C product, we found a tool that's $80 per, per month. Optimizely is a lot more, so if you can't pay for Optimizely, you might be able to pay at least $80 per month. And with that, I get hit maps, clip maps, uh, session recordings, um, form analysis, all of that. We started to use it two weeks ago. And I've learned more with two weeks of watching session replays than anything else before doing A-B testing or anything else. I was watching session replays yesterday in my hotel room and I just wanted to cry. <laughs> Seriously, my mobile product sucks. <laughs> For a B2B platform, we found even better because it's free. So if you can't pay for A-B testing, maybe you can have a free analytics tool. So it's HIP. We have the free version because we have uh, very few customers. But HIP is even better because it gives you like even tracking for everything and um, visits on pages. And with that, we were able to see what uh, features our B2B customers use and what uh, page they spend time on, and it's really helped us understand how they use our product and what we have to focus on first. If you can't do A-B testing, 
you can ask your customers. And we use surveys a lot uh, with our B2B customers. Um, it's free and it's very, very useful. So we use it in two different ways. We send a survey once a year asking about how they use the product and what do they like and what would they like, et cetera, et cetera. We have a really good response rate because it's only once a year. And once, when we want to optimize a specific feature or a specific page, we just send like a more targeted survey. Um, let's say I want to work on my dashboard page for my B2B customers. I'm gonna send a survey to the ones that use it a lot and then send a survey to the one that don't use it. And because they use it for their job, they actually answer, and we have a really, really good response rate. And from that, we have like kind of like a product roadmap already, just by asking our customers. Okay, that's the magic word during this conference. Many, many speakers have talked about it. And this is something really new for me. Um, when I was at Hotwire, we had a central team doing user testing. So I had a product manager, I had to file a request, wait three months to get it prioritized, and at some point I was getting like a very fancy PowerPoint presentation about learnings from my request. So I was actually never talking directly to my customers, and I was never testing my ideas directly with customers. We do it every single week. So our B2C customers are Parisian females between 25 and 35, and we have a Starbucks around the corner. We go to Starbucks with paper wireframes or Envision prototypes every single week. It's super fun, and then we learn more in three hours than we will ever learn with like A-B testing. And it brings our customer feedbacks way earlier in the product development process. For our B2B customers, we actually have to go to our customers and we spend more time with them, um, watching how they use our product, how they use our competitor's product. Um, when we launch a new feature, we always test a prototype with them and then we test each iteration of our prototype. And then we go to hairdressers and spa salon and manicures um, and then we have them test our product. That's the only way we can actually test because A-B test really is not possible on B2B platform. And finally, if your customers aren't around the corner, or if they are not like in the same city or in the same country, you can just call them. So we called our B2C customers to actually hear more about them. So that's Constance, Julie, Stephanie, and Michael. They are our personas. And we define our personas after talking to dozens and dozens of our customers over the phone. That's free, no skills and no money, and no traffic needed for that. So that's kind of like how I make it work today with my very little team and my small website. Um, and I actually have fun doing it, a lot more fun than I used to have at Hotwire when I was only like an A-B testing machine. If you don't have the skills in your team, just invest in training and make the process super easy and super light. If you don't have traffic, you can still do A-B testing if you're willing to make compromises. Look at micro-conversions. Work harder on your homework. Lower your significance. Only test on your top pages. Test radical changes only, and if you really can't do A-B testing, still give a try to sequential testing. If you have no money or no budget for Optimizely or an A-B testing tool, you can learn a ton from your customer with cheaper or free tools or surveys. And then the best way to learn is really to do user testing and just customer calls. That's it. <laughs>